still rolling. Sports-related head injuries occur in up to three to four million individuals in the United States per year. So by far the most common type of uh, traumatic brain injury. And one of the unique things about them is they can be recurrent. Um, another unique thing about them is they often don't come to medical attention. And so I think that's, that's very important. I've had athletes um, who have had a concussion during a game and they very candidly tell me that they continued to play with no recognition. They don't remember what happened that last quarter of the game, uh, but they continued to play. And I think that brings up another point is that while education of the athlete is important, it's not perhaps so much for the concussed athlete to self-identify themselves, right? Because if you have a disorder that involves not having good memory and being disoriented, then the likelihood that you're going to remember the symptoms and recognize that you have them is small. It's going to be more of a team approach. And we've taken this also with military personnel. Is that if you see your buddy has an orthopedic injury, he's limping or his arm is damaged or something, you're going to kind of look out for them and, and bring it to the attention of medical personnel. The brain injury should be no different. If you're in the huddle and you see your teammate with glazed eyes or disoriented or not walking steadily, um, you know, get them to medical attention. Well, my short message to them is when in doubt, sit it out. We try to stick to that mantra. But, you know, when you really want to think about it, if, if you have an injury or you see your teammate has an injury and you don't let them get medical attention, then they run the risk of getting another injury and perhaps then missing a larger portion of the season. They have to sit out longer. They'll suffer longer. Um, so it's important to identify them so they can get the proper care. The, the other thing would be that, again, thinking about for the team approach, is that if you let an individual continue to participate when their balance is off or their thinking is off, they may make an error. And when they make that error, then someone else in the team may also get injured or it may ultimately hurt the team's chances. So um, we try to work for getting people back as quickly as possible, but as safely as possible. Um, in the last year, we've set up a multidisciplinary sports concussion clinic. And a, a, a young man that we saw there uh, quite recently came in with a very sort of typical presentation of having had multiple concussions with symptoms that didn't resolve to the point where he was not able to really function in school or his sport. And through careful assessment of his and ma making the proper diagnosis from protecting him from going back to sport too early from we conducted some neuropsychological testing in clinic and gave some recommendations for him getting back into school. Um, we were able to actually get him fully recovered. And I, I was informed by his mother um, just a week ago, I believe, that his, uh, his basketball team uh, won their league championship. So I think this is an important message also to get out there, is that properly managed concussions can recover fully and individuals can go on and be productive in their school and their sport. And that's, that's really our goal.